We ended off our last video with a discussion of the different quadrants of the Cartesian plane. Here we have another example of a Cartesian plane. We have our x-axis here on the horizontal and we have our y-axis on the vertical. And over here we have all of our positive x values with our negative x values on this side. And on this top part we have our positive y values with our negative y values down here. So I haven't actually drawn in numbers on this Cartesian plane, just so it's easier for us to visualize the different triangles we're going to be drawing. But you can imagine that there are all of the numbers from 0 to positive infinity on this side of our x-axis, from 0 to negative infinity on this side of the x-axis, and from 0 to positive infinity on this side of the y-axis, and 0 to negative infinity on this side of the y-axis. But what we're going to go over today is how our trigonometric ratios can have values that are going to differ based on which quadrant we're in. And we're going to see that in each quadrant, we're going to have our sine, cosine, and tangent functions that are taking on either positive or negative values. So let's take a closer look at these quadrants and see how we can define our sine, cosine, and tangent ratios. So let's start off with quadrant one. Here we have quadrant one. So let's say we had a coordinate that was somewhere around here and we were constructing a right angle triangle. So we were drawing a line from our origin to our coordinate. Now this line is going to make up our hypotenuse. We can draw a line down from our coordinate point to the x-axis to complete our right triangle. And now we can see that we've got a triangle here. We have a hypotenuse, we have our right angle over here, and this is our theta of interest. Now let's try to define sine, cosine, and tangent for this theta that we have here. So we know that sine theta is going to be equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So this is the opposite side over here. And how can we describe that opposite side? We can see that this opposite side is going to have a value that is equal to y. And it's equal to y because we can see that whatever value this line is going to be, because it goes along our y-axis, is going to be whatever value we have on our y-axis at this point right here. So our opposite side can be described as y. Our hypotenuse let's denote as h. So we know that sine theta is going to be y over h. Cos theta, on the other hand, is going to be equal to our adjacent side, which is this side, over the hypotenuse. And this adjacent side we can describe as x because the length of this adjacent side is going to be whatever our x value is at this point. So cos theta is going to be x over h. And tan theta we know that tan is going to be equal to our opposite over our adjacent. So tan is going to be y over x. Now when we're in quadrant one, we know from any Cartesian plane that over here we have our positive values for x, and over here we have our positive values for y. For any angle that we find in quadrant one, our x and our y values are going to be positive. The length of our hypotenuse is also going to be positive, and that's going to go for any quadrant that we're in. No matter which quadrant we're in, the length of this line, of this line going from the origin out to wherever our coordinate is, regardless of wherever we are in our quadrants, that length is always going to be a positive length. The only values that are going to differ are going to be our x and our y values. Those are going to either be positive or negative depending on where we are in our quadrants, but the length of the hypotenuse is always going to be positive. So h is always going to be positive, and we know that in quadrant 1, both x and y are positive because this is our positive values for x and this is our positive values for y. So x, y, and h are all going to be positive in quadrant one. And if all of these values are positive, that means that sine theta will be positive, cos theta will be positive, and tan theta will be positive. So in quadrant one, all of our functions are going to be positive. Now let's take a look at quadrant two. This is quadrant two over here. 
and we can see that in quadrant two, we are going to have positive y values because we're still in the positive y, but our x values are going to be negative. We know that everything on this side of the Cartesian plane is where x is negative. So all of our x values in quadrant two will be negative, but all of our y values are going to be positive since we're above this line for y. So y is positive and x is negative. So let's try draw out another right angle triangle to define our trigonometric ratios in this quadrant. So let's say we had a random coordinate that was somewhere here and we were drawing a line from our origin up to our coordinate point. Let's say our coordinate was somewhere there. Now we can make a right angle triangle by bringing this line down from the coordinate to our x axis and now we can see that we have a right angle triangle with this as our right angle. And let's say that now we're trying to determine our theta over here. So now if we're looking at this purple triangle, we know that sine theta is going to be equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. And the opposite side, again, we can describe it as y because whatever the length of this side is, is going to be what our y value is at this point. So sine theta is going to be y over hypotenuse. Cosine theta is going to be x over our hypotenuse because this is our adjacent side and this side is going to have a value that's equal to x at this point. So cosine theta is x over our hypotenuse and tan theta is y over x. Again, we know it's our opposite side over our adjacent side. So now if we look at these three functions, we know that in quadrant two, our y values are positive, but our x values are negative. And we also know that our hypotenuse is always going to be positive, regardless of the quadrant that we're in. So if our y is positive and our x is negative, that means that sine theta is going to be positive, and that's because y and h are both positive. Cos theta is going to be negative, and that's because x is going to be negative and h is positive, and a negative divided by a positive is a negative. And tan theta is also going to be negative, and that's because y is positive, but x is negative, and a positive over a negative is still a negative. And that means that in quadrant two, only sine theta is going to be positive. And I should mention that um, we do know that we also have three other trigonometric functions. We have cosecant, secant, and cotangent. And you can just make a note that if sine theta is positive, we know that cosecant theta, which is the inverse of sine theta, is also going to be positive. And if cos and tan are negative, then we know that their reciprocal functions are also going to be negative. But for simplicity's sake, let's just refer to our three trigonometric functions here. So we know that in quadrant two, sine theta is positive. So we can make a note of that here. Sine is positive in quadrant two. Now let's take a look at quadrant three. If we had a coordinate, let's say somewhere here, and we were connecting our origin to that coordinate and creating a right angle triangle, let's say our coordinate was somewhere here and we can create a right angle triangle by extending this line up to the x-axis. And now we have our right angle over here. And let's say we were trying to determine this theta. Now in quadrant three, we can see that our x values are going to be negative and our y values are also going to be negative. So both x and y will be negative, whereas h, as we know, is going to be positive. So if we're trying to determine sine theta, we know that sine theta is going to be the opposite side, which is going to be our y values over the hypotenuse. So it's going to be again y over h. Cos theta is going to be our adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So it's going to be x over here over h and tan theta is going to be y over x. And we know that because y and x are negative, sine theta is going to be negative, and that's because we have a negative over a positive, which gives us a negative. Cos theta is going to be negative because we have a negative over positive again, which is negative. And tan theta is going to be positive, 
And that's because we have a negative divided by a negative, which will give us a positive. So in quadrant three, we have only tan is positive. Now let's take a look at quadrant four. In quadrant four, let's say we were to do exactly the same thing we've been doing, draw a line from our origin to some random coordinate that we're given anywhere in quadrant four. And we can create our right angle triangle using that coordinate. So here we have our right angle. Again, we have our hypotenuse over here, which is going to be positive. Our y values are going to be negative but our x values are going to be positive. We know that everything on this side of the x-axis is positive, but everything on this side of the y-axis is negative. So y will be negative and x is positive. So we have our theta over here. And again, we have sine theta is equal to our opposite side, which is y over our hypotenuse. We have cos theta as our adjacent side x over hypotenuse and we have tan theta as our opposite side which is y over our adjacent side which is x. So tan theta is y over x and we know that because x is positive but y is negative that means that sine theta is going to be negative because we have a negative over a positive which is negative cos theta is going to be positive, and that's because our x value is positive and our h value is positive, so cos is positive. And tan theta is going to be negative because we have a negative divided by a positive, which is negative. So in quadrant four, only cos is positive. And if we look at this whole Cartesian plane that we've got now, we can see that in each of our quadrants, we're going to have a different trigonometric function that is going to be positive, except for our first quadrant in which all of our functions are positive. Sine, cosine, and tan are all positive in quadrant one. In quadrant two, only sine is positive. In quadrant three, only tan is positive. And in quadrant four, only cos is positive. And there's actually a useful mnemonic you can use to remember this. And the way that I remember it is all students take a calculus. So over here we have our A, that means that all are positive. Over here we have S for students where sine is positive. Over here we have T for take and tan is positive. And over here we have C for calculus and cos is positive. So if you remember to start in quadrant one and go anti-clockwise, you can just remember all students take calculus and you can remember that it's all positive, sine positive, tan positive, and cosine positive. So regardless of whatever angle you get, as long as it's in the first quadrant, you're going to have all of your trig functions that will be positive. If you're in quadrant two, that means you have any angle from 90 to 180 degrees, you're going to have all of your signs that are going to be positive, but cosine and tangent will be negative. In quadrant three, where you're going from 180 to 270 degrees, only your tan function will be positive and your cosine and sine functions will take on negative values. And in quadrant four, where we're going from 270 to 360 degrees, only our cosine function will have positive values and our sine and tangent functions will be negative.